Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents Victor Herbert's colorful gypsy operetta, The Fortune Teller, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. Tonight, America's Railroads salute the Boys Clubs of America and the men and women who are giving unselfishly of their time and money to help carry on the work of these clubs. Their work means much in helping our youngsters achieve a happy, successful, and useful life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Dorothy Warren Show plays the lovely Musette, and I shall be a gypsy named Shandor, as we bring you Victor Herbert's The Fortune Teller. I fell in love with Musette the first moment I saw her in the ballet at the Royal Opera House. I was a poor gypsy watching her from a distance. And as she whirled on the stage, I felt somehow that she danced with all the fire and fervor of a gypsy queen. And yet, she was not a gypsy, or so they told me. All right, girls of my ballet company... I am about to disclose something of the greatest importance. Was it a new step, Professor Fresco? With it. It is the biggest step you'll ever take. The step matrimonial. Girls, Count Berezovsky is coming here to marry one of you. Oh, Count Berezovsky? Oh, the decomposer of music? Shh! Here he is. Look, your prettiest girls. Come in, Count. Ah, Fresco and you lovely ladies. You know all you beautiful girls have inspired me to compose a new waltz. Yes? Yes, uh, listen. <laughs> you know that could become popular in time. <laughs> you just composed that? Oh, isn't it cute? Oh, Beresovsky, you genius, you. Oh, excuse my mentioning it, Count, but uh, have you ever heard of Johann Strauss? A very jealous man. He, he hates me. <laughs> I can understand why. Count, about the marriage proposal... Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. You uh, shoo these little dears out of here, Professor. I don't want my choice of a wife to be influenced by a pretty face. All right, girls. Dismiss. Disappear. Oh, oh, no. Well, Count... Which one of my dancers do you like best? Well, now tell me, uh, which one owns a, uh, a snake bracelet? Why, Musette does. She has it since she was a small girl. Then I am in love with Musette. She doesn't know what I want to tell you, but she's the daughter of a gypsy king and the only heir to one of the richest fortunes in Hungary. Do you mean to say that your excellency would marry for money? After all, your title... Try eating a title between two slices of pumpernickel. <laughs> now go, go, my man, call her. Very well. Musette. Yes? Come out into the garden. Did you want to see me, Professor Fresco? Musette, you have always done as I have asked you, haven't you? Oh, it's my one rule in life, Professor. Always do as you're told. 
my aged grandma told me, and I've read the same in books, that it doesn't matter what a girl may wear or how she looks. She never should be frivolous, she never should be bold. My grandma said, my darling, always do as you are told. When grandma said, don't touch the gem, I minded her request. I did not care a bit for Jem. I like the jelly best. Be punctual at meal, she said, or I will have to scold. And I was always there, you see. I did as I was told. Always do as people say you should. You never can be happy, child, unless you're good. I do as I am told. Just as good as gold Oh, I know I shall be happy Because I am so good And now I am a grown-up girl I'm still as good as pie And I do as people tell me Or at least I always try For instance, with an officer, a handsome young dragoon, I went out for an evening walk, a stroll by light of moon. I blush to say he kissed me, it was very rude and bold. He told me not to scream, and so I did as I was told. He told me then to kiss him, it was very impudent. I thought what Grandma told me. People say you should, you never can be happy, child, unless you're good. I do as I am told, I'm just as good as gold. Oh, it makes me such a happy girl to be. My dear Musette, I'm glad you are of an obedient nature because I want you to marry Count Berutsovsky. What? Well, I must have time to, to think. Well, then I, I will return in an hour. That will uh, give me time enough to compose a brand new wedding march, especially for the occasion. <laughs> I, I haven't just thought of it. Da, ta, ta, da, ta, 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 ta. You know that could become popular in time. <laughs> it really could. Well, see you in an hour, my little bride, my little... Come, Professor. Oh, what shall I do? Can I help you, little Musette? Who are you? A friend. My name is Shandor. Oh, you're a gypsy. Yes. I seem to know your face, and yet we've never met before, have we? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Where was it? How do I know you? Let me see your hand. My hand? Well, you tell fortunes? Yes. But only gypsies tell fortunes. Where did you learn? No, you don't learn things like that. Well, what do you read in my hand? Um, a great love of freedom, of the green forest, the open sky, the stars at night. That's my lifeline. What do you read in my heartline, little fortune teller? A girl... One girl. With dark eyes that shine like stars. Who are you? Where have we met? Perhaps long ago in the green forest where the gypsies live. The birds of the forest are calling for thee. And the shades and the glades are lonely. Summer is there with her blossoms fair. And you are absent only. No bird that rests in the greenwood tree But sighs to greet 
you and kiss you. Oh, the violets yearn, yearn for your safe return. But most of all, I miss you. Slumber on, my little gypsy sweetheart. Dream of the field and the Count Berezovsky. Then come with me. Oh, I'd better leave a note. Ah, here, on the back of the professor's ballet music. Dear Professor Fresco, I cannot face marriage with the Count, so I am about to throw myself into the lake. A wet kiss to all of you, Musette. <laughs> there. P.S. Don't drag the lake. Now come, Musette, into the forest. <laughs> Stay close by me, Musette. Oh, Shandor. Oh, stop here a moment. I've never been in this forest before, and yet I seem to know every path. Every tree is familiar. The forest is home to many of us, little fortune teller. To people like me and my gypsy friends. And perhaps it can be home to you.
fortune teller. Imagine for a moment that you are looking at a map of the United States showing only its more than 225,000 miles of railroad line. You would see at once a far-reaching interconnected system of arteries that bind together every part of the nation. Now, imagine that on this map are placed all the towns and cities, the farms and factories, the mills and mines, all the things that make America the great land that it is. When this is done, one fact stands out above all others. That is the sure and complete way in which America's raw materials, producing centers, and consuming areas are knit together by railroad. That's one big reason why you may have heard it said, railroads are everybody's business. For while you may think of railroads as the business of those who own them or those who work for them, there is probably no other business in the country which more genuinely concerns you and your standard of living. The fact is, almost everything you eat, wear, and use at home or at work depends on rail transportation for its production and distribution. It's no wonder, then, that the railroads carry more freight, more miles, than all other forms of transportation combined. That's why, too, that without railroads, our farms, our industries, our defense effort would grind to a standstill. Yes, the railroads are everybody's business. And the railroads are making it their first order of business to increase still further their efficiency and improve their service so that you and all America will continue to have the railroad service you want and need. Now here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Victor Herbert's The Fortune Teller, starring Gordon McRae and Dorothy Warren Show, with Jim Backus and Fritz Fell. I took Musette away from the city to the quiet and peace of our gypsy camp in the forests. And there around the fire we joined the ring of happy faces. Am I welcome here? At a gypsy campfire, Musette. Anyone with a warm heart is welcome. Oh, I love it. A fire, good company, beautiful girl at my side. And yet there is something missing. What is it, Shandor? A gypsy must have music. My friends, is this not a better life than the army? Then here is what we say to the men who search for fame and gold. Oh, ye wars, many soldiers and horsemen. All ye who chase for the will o with fame, then you double with care and with trouble. Idlers like me have the best of the game. Ye play a game when the winners are losers. Pleasure and leisure and fun pass you by. Think ye that I would change places with you, sirs? Thank ye, good slaves of the army. Not I, not I, <laughs> not I, <laughs> no. What? Up with a bugle and march, <laughs> oh no, you may do that, is not my way. What? Buy all my joys for cash. Oh no, that is for you. But I cry you nay. Turn my.
my blood to gold shall I, let my heart roll shall I, let yours be the strife, but a lazy life is a happier life I know. Oh, 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 what? Work like the fools, oh no. Oh, Shandor, I wish I could lead the life of a gypsy. You can, Musette. Oh, no, they'll find me and take me back to the city. And, and yet I wish I could spend all of my life here. In the forest, every bird, every flower seems to be in love. Even a few of the people. And do you suppose that's what's wrong with me? What is this strange elation I feel? This confusion which surrounds me. And can this sensation be real? Or is this but delusion around me? Can it be but a gypsy's device to entice me, paradise me? I wonder, do you feel you mean that? Do you really love me? Oh, I don't know, Shandor. I don't know whether it's you or, or a spell cast by the forest. Oh, oh my poor music. Listen, there are strangers approaching. Hide, and we shall see if they are our friends or our enemies. Count Barachowski, it is no use looking further into the forest. Musette is gone. She's drowned. Ah, me. Oh, my I must compose a song to commemorate her fate. I've got it. I've got it. Many brave hearts lie asleep in the... <laughs> you know, if I could think of a last word, that song could become very popular in time. Come, we shall return to the city. Oh, to think that I have found and lost a fortune. <laughs> Tell her. Now nobody will ever know that Musette was an heiress and a gypsy princess. Wait. What do you mean? This is none of your business, Gypsy. It is my business. I love Musette. But she is at the bottom of the lake. Oh, no. Musette, come out. It's a ghost. No, no, I didn't drown myself. As a, as a matter of fact, instead of dying, I really began to live. Well, I think I'll be toddling along. Uh, now, wait a minute, Count Beretsovsky. What was that you said about Musette and the fortune? Now, I'll hate myself for telling you this, but uh, Musette is the daughter of a gypsy king and the, and the heiress to all his gold. Oh, I knew that I belonged here, that the forest was my home, and that one day I would be somebody's gypsy sweetheart. Gypsy sweetheart? What a wonderful idea for a song. Wait, I have the melody. La, 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 my little gypsy... <laughs> You know, that could become popular in time, well, if I leave it alone. <laughs> well, little fortune teller, can you still read the future? I think so. Look in your own hand. Tell me, what do you see there? Oh, I see a life full of happiness and golden dreams for a man named Shandor and his gypsy sweetheart.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely Dorothy Warren show. We'll be back in just one moment. And our thanks to Jim Backus, Fitzfeld, and our entire company. The Fortune Teller, with music by Victor Herbert and book by Harry B. Smith, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? More than any other industry you can think of, the railroads are not just the business of the people who own them, those who work for them, and those who use them. No, the railroads are truly everybody's business. That's because all of us depend on the railroads to provide the tremendous volume of transportation ne- needed to keep our farms and factories going and to distribute their products efficiently and economically to every corner of the country. To do that job, America's railroads every minute haul more than a million tons a mile. And the fact the railroads can and do perform that essential service is one big reason why all of us live as well as we do. Thank you, Marvin. And now here again is our delightful fortune teller, Dorothy Warren Show. Thank you, Gordon. No, I loved every minute of it. Well, you know, Dorothy, the best part of having your palm read by a very pretty girl is that you, uh, you get to hold hands. <laughs> now, Gordon, let go. <laughs> and tell me, what's on the show train next week? Well, you're the fortune teller. Look into your crystal ball and see. All right. Sounds to me like John Philip Sousa's El Capitan. And that lovely girl in your crystal ball looks like the star of the New York City Opera Company. And airs. I make one more prediction. We'll all be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy. You were wonderful. All aboard. Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night. And Sousa's El Capitan, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> The Fortune Teller was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae may soon be seen co-starring in By the Light of a Silvery Moon. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. (laughs) 